Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Garrick, and today I'll present to you our work on event-based asynchronous sparse convolutional networks, uh, which we did in collaboration with uh, Nico, who couldn't make it, and Antonio and uh, Davide Scaramuzza. Um, if you want to check out our paper and video, we, you can sh uh, follow these links. Um, yeah. Um, second. Okay. So let's start with the motivation. So. As we've uh, learned in a couple of the presentations so far, uh, event cameras have amazing properties. They are HDR, they have uh, very little motion blur, they are low latency, have high temporal resolution. Uh, however, the problem is that, uh, or let's say the challenge is that the data is sparse and triggered asynchronously. So for this reason, we have to design novel algorithms um, to handle this kind of data, since we cannot reuse algorithms designed for images. So um, in our work, we are mostly addressing uh, learning algorithms. So um, traditionally, a learning algorithms using event cameras can be uh, categorized into two different uh, uh, categories. The first one is processing events um, event by event, uh, or asynchronous learning methods. And the other one is processing events as batches, or dense learning methods. For asynchronous learning methods, uh, events are processed event, one event at a time, and they can do this efficiently because they either use lightweight architectures or hardware accelerators, such as SNN uh, accelerators. However, due to their design, um, they're either difficult to train or are limited in terms of the task complexity which they can solve. On the other hand, Dense learning methods uh, process events as batches or groups of events. These groups are converted into grid-like representations which are then used by classical con convolutional neural networks. These networks are relatively easy to train due to the availability of efficient backpropagation algorithms and thus yield high performance on complex computer vision tasks. However, this performance comes at a cost because these methods also need to look, uh, we, they also, need a lot of computation, uh, and this computation, I'll argue in the rest of my talk, um, is kind of wasteful. So are there any questions so far? No. Okay. Nothing. So, um, all right, thanks. Um, so then let's start with the, uh, the tr let's start with uh, illustrating why dense learning methods such as CNNs perform redundant computation. A standard CNN-based approach works by aggregating events into representations which are spatially sparse, as you can see here in the, the bird diagram. Um, and this is followed by a sequence of convolutions, downsamplings, and nonlinearities. So while the input of the network is actually spatially sparse, due to the convolution operation, intermediate network activations seen here uh, become blurry. Um, and, lead, and this leads to a loss of sparsity. This is because the convolution operation processes all pixels in the input, including those that did not trigger events or are noisy, although these pixels carry very little information or no information at all. As a result, standard convolutions lead to redundant computation. Um, in addition, we have another effect which uh, leads to redundant computation. So let us now imagine a scenario where we want to generate a network prediction for each new event. A classical method would solve this by reprocessing the whole input each time a new event arrives. However, clearly this is redundant since a new event only indicates a local change in the representation and does not affect the whole image. Uh, so actually reprocessing the whole image is kind of um, redundant. As you can see at different layers um, here, the whole activation maps have to be updated. So the, the activations that are updated are here indicated in green. In this work, we seek to address both of these challenges. On the one hand, we adopt sub-manifold sparse convolutions. These convolutions only compute an output where the input pixel is non-zero, as is indicated in this diagram here. This greatly reduces the computational complexity compared to standard convolutions. And as a result, intermediate activations uh, seen here on the right become sparse. In addition, we adopt, um, in addition, we formulate asynchronous and local update rules for each new event. 
This means that for each new event, only relevant pixels are updated at each layer, which leads to a large reduction in computational complexity. To illustrate this, uh, here I've indicated again um, a single pixel um, updating the image at, in this red square. And now we can see in green again the updated pixels as we move down into the network. And so as we are moving down into the network, this region expands. However, compared to the previous approach of, of processing all of the pixels, we are now only looking at a very small subset. In addition, by using submanifold sparse convolutions with, in combination with this approach, we can leverage the intrinsic fractal dimension of event data to further improve efficiency. Uh, here again, you see that now uh, the updated region is no longer a square, but actually a, uh, only is um, confined to these dark pixels here. So now let me go into more detail on what uh, this, sub, uh, this fractal dimension means. So um, if we now put the computational complexity of different approaches on a scale, we see that um, our method combining asynchronous updates and submanifold sparse convolutions is computationally much more efficient than dense convolutions, where the computation scales with the number of pixels in each layer, n. If we adopt um, an local update rules uh, using a dense convolution, we see that the number of pixels updated scales as the square of the network depth, so n. On the other hand, if we use um, our method using asynchronous and sparse convolutions, um, we can see that the updated pixels actually scale with an exponent gamma smaller than two, um, which leads to increased efficiency. Here I have a plot illustrating to you what exactly this fractal dimension is. In, the, in our work, we were able to establish an upper bound on the computation of our method in blue. Um, this bound grows with the fractal dimension gamma, the slope in this log-log plot. Um, so the bound is here in red, and you see that the plot, uh, the, the, uh, the slope of this line is what we call the fractal dimension. Um, moreover, um, this computation is also upper bounded by the computation necessary for performing a dense asynchronous um, convolution. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first to characterize this fra fractal dimension for event data and use it in this context. To validate uh, our approach, um, we test uh, these, sub uh, these asynchronous um, sparse convolutions on two computer vision tasks. One is event-based object detection and one is object recognition. To highlight, the, to highlight the computational gains of our method, we compare the task performance of our method and the number of flops necessary to generate a prediction after a single new event. In this table, uh, we compare different methods for object recognition. Uh, we see that compared to dense CNNs, here highlighted in the red box, our method perform, uh, uses up to 50 times less uh, flops compared to the state-of-the-art learning methods. In addition, compared to asynchronous uh, learning methods, our method achieves up to 4.3% higher performance. Similarly, for object, uh, for object detection, we find that our method uses up to 18 times less computation while outperforming state-of-the-art methods by up to 24.5%. So in conclusion, we introduce a framework that leverages the sparse and asynchronous nature of event data to reduce the computational complexity of existing neural networks. It does this by using sparse convolutions and efficient asynchronous update rules. As a result, we are able to find an upper bound on the computation related to the fractal dimension, which we characterize. We validate it on the task of object detection and object recognition, where we find an up to 50 times reduction in number of flops compared to dense CNNs, and an up to 4.5% increase in performance compared to asynchronous methods. If you want to learn more about our work, uh, you can follow the links to the paper and the video below. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any oh. on the... Oops, sorry. The I, yeah? I think I closed... Uh, oh, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's okay. Um, well, there are not, no questions, but I, just out of curiosity, I mean, you're talking about the fractal dimension. Are you estimating that online or do you have uh, like a pre-estimate of 
of the of this dimension um this dimension is uh, something that we um characterize offline so it's offline. uh we we look at a um an image of aggregated events so mm -hmm. here in in these small boxes yeah. and then we count how many of these uh boxes or pixels are actually occupied by events by enlarging the yeah. the patch yeah. and uh by plotting these this number in the log log plot we can actually see yeah. that the growth rate of this and it's just used to to characterize the computational complexity and not done online uh, but that that actually depends on the scene you are i mean the dimension would depend on the scene you are looking at right yes yes okay. also it depends on the number of events that are aggregated okay so there is another question there's a question here for from juan pablo it says how did you label the data for object recognition so for object recognition we used uh, standard benchmarks um, we're using um, the NCARS data set uh, mm -hmm. proposed in CBPR 18 and the NCALTEC 101. Um, and for object detection, we are actually using the, the data set from Prophecy, which was released earlier this year. And uh, they, yeah, they label the data, as, as they said, with a, a frame-based camera and then transfer the labels to the event stream. Mm 